Thank you so much for joining us for your intermediate level reformer class. Susie is going to be our body today. So pull up your reformer and let's go. So we're going to start with a standing roll down. So Suzanne's just going to start with her feet hip distance apart, checking that the outside edges of the feet are parallel. And then just standing upright and feeling the stack of the vertical alignment here. So feeling the pelvis shifting back, just settling in front of the ankle joint in terms of a vertical line. The ribs on top of the pelvis and then the head balanced like a bowling ball on top of the stack of the ribs and the pelvis. Let's take a breath in through the nose and breath out, start to cascade forward and down off that imaginary wall. Letting the pelvis now rotate around the thigh bones to go all the way forward into the legs. Breath in and let's breathe out and start to pivot the leg, the hips around the legs and curl back up to standing. And again, inhale at the top and exhale and rolling down. So just try and let the breath last you all the way down and a big inhalation down the bottom, fill up the space between crown of the head and the tailbone and then rolling back up. So let's do a few more here, just starting to ease all of the little aches and stiffnesses out of the spine, feeling like you're trying to roll further and further forward into yourself while keeping the upright alignment of the leg bones, the weight still centered over the front of the ankle joints. Good, let's take one more breath there or one more repetition, I should say. Good, and although the arms will hang, try not to allow them to hang fully out of the shoulders. You wanna keep that sensation of the shoulders connected into the back, and then rolling back up to standing. Beautiful. So we're gonna come onto the reformer now. Let's choose two red springs on the bottom, ready for our pelvic curl. So two springs. The lighter we go with this, the harder it is. So if you're still just new to the intermediate level, you may want to lift the springs up slightly more. And just starting with the heels up onto the foot bar, hip distance apart, and finding that neutral pelvis alignment here. Let's inhale again, and exhale, start to move through the imprint and roll all the way up into that lovely bridge position. Stretching the knees forwards over the shins and the feet, inhale, and exhale, start to trickle down the spine, feeling like it rolls away from the throat and rolls downhill into the tailbone back to neutral. Inhale and then exhale to move through the imprint. So really starting to get a sensation of the hip joints, really allowing that pivoting action as freely as possible to create that bridge alignment. So by now at intermediate level, we've practiced the imprint movement pattern many, many times. So we should be feeling really confident with that in our own bodies. Good. And it's tempting to drift away from the stoppers. So keep thinking about pulling the springs closed by feeling the sitting bones going higher up into the back of the legs. Good. The eye gaze stays to the ceiling and you can then get the arms and the shoulders to provide a little bit of an extra kickstand feeling for the support of the spinal mobilization. Good, let's do two more here. Feeling a magnetic attraction at the top of the thigh bones towards each other, but then a slight sideway push open at the side of the knee, just to reinforce that parallel alignment. Good, last one. We're gonna hold up at the top on this next one. So feeling a gentle idea of the whole of the feet drawing back to the shins and then the sitting bones going under. Let's exhale, float the right leg up to single leg lift. Inhale, place it down. Exhale, alternate the other leg up and back down. Beautiful, so keeping really solid on the standing leg each time and not really allowing any shift of weight so that you're just practicing the three points that are left grounded really stabilizing you so much that the other body part can just float up from that hip joint. Good. Finish on the left there. Beautiful. Reset yourself. Just really find that sitting bones under and reach the knees forward over the, the feet. And then exhale, let's roll back down, trying to stay snug into the stopper. Good. Let's interlace the hands back around behind the head making sure you just find a little bit of clearance so that the shoulder rests aren't in your way. Neutral pelvis, feeling still the heaviness of the base of the rib cage. Yeah, so let's work on the wrap of the 
shoulder blades around, almost creating a seat belt effect into the front of the hips and pelvis there. Breath in to prepare with the two legs tabletop. Exhale, chest lift three. Let's come up. And inhale to lower. And exhale to come up. Beautiful. So by this time again, this is a movement pattern that you know quite well. So let's focus instead on really digging deep into the technique of it. Can you stretch the back of your ribs away from the back of your pelvis and feeling like you go up and over yourself to come up? The head stays nicely firm back into the hands. The armpits face towards each other and you're constantly feeling that upward swing of the shoulder blades around the ribs and out through the elbows. Last time, let's come up and hold. Now we're going to pivot from the two hip joints to send the legs away on that same angle and then just hold there. So we're going to just do like a double lower, so bend your knees. Yeah, keep the 90 degree angle at the legs and hinge from the hips to take that shape down and up. Exactly. So just challenging that single leg lift exercise that last time we applied in pelvic curl and this time we're applying into chest lift. So push the thighs away from the ASIS, keeping the pelvis really firmly anchored down. Two more. The lower you take your legs, the harder it's going to be. And you want to really make sure that you're maintaining the height of your chest lift the whole time too. Last one. Beautiful. Hold yourself there. And let's go puller to one hip bone. And then come back to centre. Exhale to the other side. Fabulous. So here, just getting a little sense of that rotation, mobilisation and strength work. Keep the top of the thigh bones glued together. Eye gaze is going to turn around and look at that back elbow each time. Now keep going and take it into crisscross now. So opposite leg stretches. Good. So just progressing at that little bit more to keep this warm up at the intermediate level. So stretch that long leg out away from you. And at the same time, pull the bent leg deeply into that same side armpit. And then see if you can keep that length on the two sides of the waist and really turn and feel the wrap of the shoulder blades coming around the ribs and almost like they slide into the inner thigh of the opposite leg. Good, one more to each side and then you should be well and truly cooked there. Come back to the centre, legs tabletop, lower the head and shoulders, wrap hold of the two pegs and let's inhale to spine twist the hips, legs over to one side and exhale to come back to the centre. Good, so keep going. Susie could lower her heels just a touch and feeling almost like you're hugging a little ball at the back spaces of the knees and enveloping that ball up into the puffiness of the shins. Beautiful. And see if you can use the feeling of the shoulder pegs in your hands to get that width across the back, but still keep the turnout through the upper arm bones. That should help you to keep the connection between ribs and hips and allow the twist to come from the spine. Legs and pelvis are a passenger for that rotation. Last one. Really lovely. So keeping that one, just the simple version. Stretch your two legs out on top of the foot bound there, Sue. Arms up to vertical. Let's inhale to chest lift and exhale to roll all the way up, ready to change springs for double leg and footwork. We're going to have three red springs and a blue today. So let's do three red springs and a blue. So three red springs and a blue now, Sue, for double leg and footwork today. Perfect. And then find again that neutral alignment on the carriage. Let's have the heels hip distance apart on the foot bar and just take a moment to really look at the feet and see if we can optimise that position. So Susie's going to move her left foot to the left, right foot across slightly. So feel that it's not right on the centre of the heel, it's slightly above the centre of the heel and then you're drawing the whole of the feet back towards the thighs. And at the same time, the thighs towards the feet. Sorry, I moved this <laughs> All right, and that I can feel now that she's getting a lot more drive down through the back of the hips before we've even gone anywhere. So let's inhale to prepare and exhale to stretch the two legs out. And inhale to come back to the stopper and exhale to press. So feeling as if it's first and foremost,
waist, a bend and a pivot at the hip joint to push out and also to come back in again. And then the knees are more of the passive receiver of that work. So you want to feel like you're not driving from your knees necessarily. And that's going to help keep that anchor in neutral pelvis as well. Good. And keeping that prioritization of the ribs to pelvis alignment. The eye gaze up to the ceiling. So Susie's got her headrest up a little and that can be a really great position in order to get the base of the ribs just to settle down in line with the pelvis. Last two. So just starting to warm up the legs, warm up the hips. Beautiful. We're going to skip toes parallel and go to the V position. So toes on the bar, heels together, lift the heels up slightly so there feels like a good amount of energy under the balls of the feet. Knees in line with the armpits. Inhale, prepare. Exhale to press away. Good. So keep that going and you'll notice that we do a couple of setup checkpoints. But after that with intermediate level, you want to get moving because we've done this type of exercise many, many times already at the progressive and also the basic level reformer work. So you want to focus more on getting the movement going and optimizing the movement once the client is inside the repetitions. So again, let's feel some magnetic connection at the top of the thigh bones and feeling as if the thigh bones pull up into the hips as well as the legs driving down through the feet. So it's almost like you're pulling your leg bones in two different directions. Let's do two more. Looking really lovely. Sue could just slightly tip her tailbone down toward the springs a little more, and that will give her more ability to press the thighs right down into that maximum hip extension. Gorgeous. Last one. Excellent. Come back in straight into the heels out wide position. Exhale, press. Inhale, come home. And so from that V, it was an easy transition to go out wide because you're looking for the same turnout through the foot and the femur, so and the thighs. Good. And if you imagine that there's another foot bar underneath all the balls of the toes and that you could represent all of those metatarsals on that second foot bar as well. And feeling like, again, you get that movement from the hip joint. Let's do two more there. Keep feeling that wide collarbone sensation, pressing through the back of the arms without a push forward of the ribs, which is tricky. Good. And we're coming in and going straight to raises now. So parallel toes, lift the heels slightly. And first of all, stretch the springs as far as you can. It's an inhale to lower the two heels and exhale to lift. And inhale to lower and exhale to lift. And so I'm going to look at her from this angle so I can really see that the parallel alignment of the legs is being maintained. And even though it's an ankle movement for sure, you want to make sure that there's actually a baby little hip movement that's happening too. So as she presses down her heels, she's getting more hip extension. And as she rises up, there should be a slight fold into hip flexion. And that will allow her pelvis to stay really broad and heavy without an excessive squeeze on the bottom cheeks. Let's go straight into the prances now there, Suze. Good. So could you feel from the big toe ball running all the way up the inside seams of the legs that there could be a collective pull together of the thighs up into the pelvis and that the ribs then just get taller away from the pelvis because of that lovely uplift. And if we're working from the ground up with the feet here, let that uplift originate from the arches of the feet, even of the bending leg. Yes, very nice. And two more sets, really good. Last time, and coming all the way back in, stretch the two legs over the top of the foot bar, arms up to the ceiling, let's come up to transition, curling to chest lift, roll up. We're gonna do some singles leg and footwork now. So Suzanne is going to drop herself perhaps to two red and a blue spring, but you might just want to choose something different if that doesn't quite suit you. At intermediate level, your clients really should have a lovely amount of autonomy with their spring selection so that they know what feels right for them. So we're going to do toes um, single to start, Suze, yeah? So this will be leading us towards a developer. So let's start with a, just a C 
single toes basic there, pressing out and in. Just to give us our bearings on standing on one leg. So feeling the nice alignment of the two ASIS and not having the hip height on the leg that is floated at tabletop, which can sometimes happen. So sometimes I like to feel as if I'm pushing the foot bar with my two sit bones, like I'm sitting on the bar and getting that lovely reach. Yeah, that's good. So let's do two more. And then we're gonna progress it into toes progression right away from there. So just adding an extension of the top leg and then bending it in as you come in. So not too many repetitions here. Let's keep really juicing up the arch of the underneath foot, especially on the push out. Lovely, one more. And let's take it to the Devla pace. Thread that leg under the bar, and then we're gonna come through tabletop and lift. Good, so I've chosen to progress all up through this one side, rather than doing single basic, single basic on both sides, progression, progression both sides, and Devla pay on both sides. But you should also do that too. This is harder because the endurance of her being on that one leg for longer is a real challenge. Last two there, working through the tabletop and extending at the knee joint without any hitching of that hip. Last one. Oh yeah, perfect, Suze. Counting, definitely not my strong point. <laughs> All right, so she's gonna get set up for her toes, basic. Let's just have this foot slightly over to the left. Good, so Susie tends to be a little more medial with her left leg, so um, it's a common adjustment for me to give her some more abduction on that left-hand side. And then exhale to press out. Good, and inhale to come in. Lovely. So for Susie as well, on this side, she will tend to be a little more posteriorly tilted in her pelvis, so if she can think again of sitting bones reaching forward, and slight drop of the tailbone as if there's a little string drawing her tailbone through toward the floor. Nice. So that the movement of flexion and extension can be more at the hip joint and it doesn't start to happen at the lumbar spinal around the sacrum area and cause tension there. That looks beautiful now, Suze. Yeah, and taking it into the progression. Thank you very much. Well done. So the top of the thigh bones, again, still drawing towards each other to allow that feeling of uplift into the center. Let's do one more there and threading straight under the bar for the developé. So the challenge with the developé is how much range of movement that leg that is going through that arc is making. When it's low down under that foot bar, very hard to maintain neutral pelvis and just feel the press and the suction down of that thigh. So if she imagines that along the back of that right thigh, there's octopus tentacles that really just suction it down. Last one. Excellent. And coming all the way back to home. Send your two legs out over the bar, arms up to the vertical. Let's transition now, coming up for our abdominal category. One red, one blue is what Susie's gonna to use today. But if you wanted to progress more, you could do two red springs or even take it a little lighter if that suited you as well. So Susie's going to keep her headrest up and we're not up at the full height, we're just up at the half height. So that's always a nice option too. Starting with the two arms up above the shoulders and the legs at tabletop. And Susie's making a fist so that she can feel that the strap is making contact with her palm and that's giving her feedback into the back of the shoulder joint. Let's inhale, prepare for the 100. Exhale, curl forward, press out and start pumping. So breathing and out, two, three, four, five. Keeping the line of the wrists really long. So Sue's on that left wrist. See if you can stretch the knuckles forward. Beautiful. And feel as if there is a sense of collection down through the shoulder blades so that there's a V in the center of your back that draws down towards your tailbone. Yeah, and at the same time, the shoulders and the armpits feel light and lifted and buoyant. So that sense of draw down is not from the top of your shoulders, but more so from the blades. Good, feel the top of the thigh bones gently rolling in and sliding together. Yes, and we're aiming for the toes to be in line
line with the eyes here, but if you need to lift your legs up or take them into the tabletop, you certainly can do that to regress if need be. Let's do two more breaths there, Suze. Let's breathe and pump a little more vigorously. Yes, it's a breathing exercise. Last time. And then bend the knees, raise the arms. We're going into coordination right away. So we're going to inhale, prepare. We're going to exhale, curl forward. Open, close legs. Knees coming first, you deepen, then lower. Exhale, press. So the width of the legs, we're aiming about foot bar width apart. And the emphasis is on the closure. So you really want to snap the legs closed with control right from the top of the thigh bones. Let's do last one there and then we'll take it into the triceps version, maintaining chest lift just for three. Knees come in, elbows bent. So she maintains the chest lift throughout and keeps thinking about drawing the arm bones downhill into the back of the shoulder joint. Good, feeling the stretch of the back of the ribs off the back of the pelvis. That was our three, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, perfect. Now we've got butterfly to finish this abdominal sequence. Breath in, prepare again, exhale to come up. Open and close. So the palms are rotated to face toward the body and there's a turnout at the legs as well. Good, so you wanna keep maintaining the height of the chest lift and deepening the base of the ribs down toward the pelvis and tailbone. Two more if you've got it in you. Suction the back of the head back in space and bend by curling forward the lumbar. Woo, we did it. Okay, let's put the straps down for a second. Stretch the legs over the bar. Of course, I could certainly change her springs for you, but I'm teaching as if this is a group class. Two red springs now for the strap work. So I could have kept her on the red and the blue, but I know she has the strength to go to two red springs for her leg strap. So placing one foot and then the other foot into the straps, making sure that they're sitting just above the heels there. Starting with the frog position, so heels together and knees bent in. And you already want to make sure that there's a sensation of standing into the straps and the load sitting in the pelvis and the legs not compressing you into your back. Exhale, press the legs forward over the foot bar. Inhale, come back home. Good, exhale, press forward. Good, so not too many here, just getting ready for some of the more um, intermediate leg strap exercises. So as the legs come in, take care that it doesn't pull the lumbar spine into an imprint. You're still just challenging your hip flexion, maintaining that neutral. One more time. Good. Bring the two legs up to the ceiling there now. Yep, for the circles, pressing down, out and around up to the top. And exhale, press. Out, around, up to the top. Gorgeous. So even though the legs will split open, you still want to think about that magnetic closure at the top of the thigh bones. So that there's a feeling that almost down below the hip joint is where the maximum push out to the side will happen. That will help the oiliness of the circumduction. All right, reverse. Really, really lovely hip to rib cage alignment there, Suze. Just do one more and stay low toward the foot bar for me for the low openings. Inhale to split and exhale to close. Good. And so you want to try and maintain the same amount of turnout throughout. And if she had imaginary cloths on the underside of her heels, she would be sliding those cloths along a tabletop line. Last one extended frog now. So bend the two knees in when you're done on that one there, Suze. Push forward into little frog. Open into the low openings and then really turn out the thigh bones to pull the heels together and press away. So as she bends the knees and brings the heels together, the carriage doesn't move and you really focus on the wrapping turnout at the hip joint. It's important that at that moment, there's no tuck under and pressure into the sacrum there because it will make it really difficult to get the rotation coming from the correct place. So she's reversing now. Very nice. And even as the legs come in, see if you can keep standing on the straps. Very good. Last one here. And let's come in 
into long spine. So we're going to drop the headrest flat. Definitely an important safety point. We're going to stick with that same spring and just check there's enough space there for the shoulders at the shoulder block so you don't feel too pulled up. So we're going to have the legs coming up towards the vertical, but really maintaining the length in the sitting bones. And then let's ex exhale and imprint to roll the spine up. Good, really feeling the press of the thighs back towards the foot butt. Separate the legs hip distance apart. Feet can come over to you just a little bit more there, Sue. Yes. And then exhale to roll the spine down. Once you find neutral, let's do a little circle collect of the legs and come back to the vertical. And exhale, let's imprint and roll. It's just like pelvic curl to get up. Separate the feet, flex them, and then let's roll back down. So very challenging to maintain that inner thighs um, connection as the legs separate because you will rely on it a lot as you roll up. Good. So really keep that sensation of pulling towards each other and down. So let's now do the reverse. So we start with the legs hip distance apart and we exhale to roll up. Really sucking the thighs through toward the foot bar and lifting the ASIS up towards the ribs. Beautiful. Circle. And back up. Good. And last one. <laughs> Susie's circle was a tiny bit uncoordinated. <laughs> when you've been upside down, your brain is finding new pathways. So with the circle, you're going to go down the centre, little circle around and finish at the yeah, hip distance. That's plenty there. Plenty. Let's take the feet out of the straps. Okay, legs onto the bar, roll up, and we're going to do semi-circles. So peeling up and choose one red spring on the outside. So definitely not an inside spring or a centre spring, because otherwise the bottom will keep the, the spring tension there. So you lie down. This one can be hard to get clients into. You hold onto the shoulder blocks, and then you push and wiggle your way out until your hips and trunk are off the carriage. The toes are in. The, the, the V position on the bar and we're starting down. Good. Excellent. So first and foremost, you don't want to just push the ribs out to drop the bottom. If you really think about what shoulder work needs to happen, can the shoulder blades cut around the base of the ribs and almost circle around under the base of the armpits? And that's what gives you the push through your arms. It'll allow you to access some extension up high and then let the rest of the spine feel like it's coming around circular underneath the carriage and towards the back of the head and the hands. Let's exhale to roll the spine up. Good. We're going to push your weight to nearly straight legs so that you can really feel the sitting bones up into the front of the thighs. And then we're going to roll back down into that start position with the full spinal extension before we come back in. Good, letting the hips really lower and then curling up. So keep going, it's not a hanging down sensation of the bottom, it's a circular back extension position that feels like the strength of the legs and the hips kind of drawing up into the work of the back makes it feel very supported. So yes, it is a, a big range of movement, but we don't feel like we're just hanging out in that position. We're working from the arches of the feet all the way up through the centre of the legs, feeling the slide up of the sacrum into the back. Let's reverse now, Sue. So going back down, push out to the nearly straight legs with the bottom low, and then it's a smaller range of movement to come up, and then you'll keep lifting your pelvis as you come forward over your feet for that gorgeous stretch. So just keep checking in with the shoulders and seeing if you're getting that upswing of the shoulder blades, but not so that it pulls the upper back apart too much. You want to feel still connected in the back and it should assist your arms to turn out even more. Okay, this is our last one because there's going to be plenty here. And then you can carefully slide back onto the carriage. All right, we're going to use a grip mat now, peeling up to sitting, and we're going to do the stomach massage series. 
So we're going to start with three red springs on. Excellent. Sitting towards the front of the carriage and the toes are onto the bar in a V position. So hands to the front edges of the carriage. And if you're studying the mat work, this position is very similar to rolling like a ball. So you certainly don't want to be leaning back through the upper back. You want to feel that the power of your legs pulling up into your pelvis allows you to get very tall and then to feel the forward curl coming right around that lower back area. Beautiful. Exhale, let's press away. Lower the hips, lift the heels and in. And press, lower, lift, in. So it's as if the legs pulling the carriage back out from underneath you allows you to grow taller and keep your forward curl into the power of the springs of the legs. And then you're not hanging onto the hands on the front of the carriage, you're pressing back to allow yourself more feedback in that forward curl. One more time. That's gorgeous, Suze, well done. And then we're going to, because you wanted to, come back in, reach back and hold onto the shoulder blocks for the flat. So she lifts herself up really lovely and tall, and we want to just still feel that sense of length at the back of the, the head and the neck there. Beautiful. And feeling the collarbones rolling back over the shoulders. Now this is tough for Suze. See if we can narrow those knees into the armpits that little bit extra. Exhale, press away, lower and lift, come back in. And see if you can lift your heels up higher as you come back in. That's also very, very tough. So if holding the shoulder rest is too much for the shoulders, you can definitely feel free to put your hands down onto the carriage behind you. Well done. See if you can keep feeling how tall you are up on those sitting bones and we're basically doing seated leg and footwork right now. Last two. So you want that hip action. Parking that carriage that is your Ferrari nice and soft onto the home. Now we're going to change the spring, dropping a red down. So we've replaced it with the blue. So we've got two red and a blue springs now. The reach. This time there's no feedback with the hands rested down on any surface. We find that tall upright position and we press and pull. And you'll notice that we don't have the little calf raise in between each repetition anymore. Just keep lifting up through that sternum there. Beautiful feeling the length at the back of the ribs and the suction back of the head and the arms are somewhere for the trunk to aim. Yes, two more to go. Feel the stretch of the legs and the closure at the top of the thighs. Well done. And coming home now. Beautiful red and a yellow spring for our up stretch series. So Susie likes the red and a yellow. And you could do just one red or you could go slightly heavier as well if that's your preference. So we're going to go straight into up stretch number two. So starting with the pelvis backed up over the hips, oh, over the feet, hard to back the pelvis <laughs> up to your hips. And the heels are halfway up the shoulder block, so not too high over the arch of the instep there. Back nice and long. So Sue could lengthen her ster sternum forward through the window of her shoulders just a little bit more. Yes. And at the same time, feel the closure of the legs and the lift and broadness of the hips. You're going to inhale, pivot at the shoulders and the hips to come out to front support. And exhale to come back up. Well done. Inhale to pivot. So we're not traveling forwards and backwards with our shoulders in relation to our hands through this exercise. So you really wanna get that sensation of the hips pushing the thighs back and ending in one lovely long line, tailbone through to the crown of your head. Really nice, everybody. So feel the wrap of the shoulder blades going around the ribs and that's what gives you the power down through those foot bar holding arms. Now, let's stay out there. Long stretch. Inhale, travel forwards over the foot bar as far as you are able to maintain the line. Exhale, press back. Good. So inhale, traveling forward, and it should feel like you're going up and over your shoulders and hands as far as you're able to keep the alignment there. So it can be 
attempting to start to drop the head and curl the upper body, but we're really wanting to work on that shoulder stabilizing sensation. Ooh, well done. Sitting bones going gently down into the back of the thighs and really driving through your heels. So as you go forward, think about pushing back through your heels. Yes, getting that oppositional energy. Last one. Keep the eyes of your elbows gently facing in towards each other, armpits facing towards each other. Lift the hips back up. Oh, that was a good one. The shoulders were really good on that last rep. Okay, drop to one red spring. Step your heels down. And we're going to turn around for the reverse lunge. We could have slid an elephant in there if we wanted to, but we want to get through all of our exercises here today. So starting in a lunge position with the back toes up onto the foot bar and your front foot slightly going up the headrest there. So really take a moment to find your square hip alignment. And for a lot of people that sometimes means actually lifting the hips up slightly because you'll find that people will tend to really hang down. Let's inhale to stretch the front knee and exhale to pike the two legs right up into the pelvis. Inhale to stretch back out to the slip and then bend. Inhale to straighten. Exhale to pike. Good. And Sue is doing a great job of keeping her two hips square even as she brings the carriage home onto the stopper. And that is what you're looking for. So that this front thigh really slides back as well as the back thigh sliding up so that they're converging right up into the hips. Excellent. Keeping nice straight arms and that sense of driving from the shoulder blades rather than just pushing up into the thoracic. Let's hold up in the piked position now for two breaths. Breathing in and out and you can just feel that up draw of the legs into the hips which will allow you to forward curl your spine into your front thigh more. Last one, feeling that lovely even curvature and bringing the head through as well. Now come out into the splits and hold for two breaths. So breathing and holding, finding that maximal split. So this front leg is driving through the heel but maintaining equal pullback. Last one, the two sides of your waist are evenly long and your sternum is reaching forward. Now bend your front knee and hold the lunge position. Really get strong on this back leg, driving back through the heel. And if you can, transition your front foot up onto the foot bar behind you. And then step the other leg forward. All right, take a moment to just find your square alignment. Beautiful. So oftentimes that might mean the front knee needs to slightly push out to the side whilst that hip draws back and for Sue that is the side that requires that more. So inhale to straighten out the front leg, exhale to pull up into the pipe, inhale to stretch and return. Really great. So this is a harder side for Sue's to have her front leg as the supporting leg. And it's more difficult for her two sides to stay connected to each other. What I can see when I look from the bird's eye view, I see more that the pelvis halves want to separate out more rather than staying closed up through the hips. So that can be a nice visual, imagining that your hips are almost like a love heart and you want to feel the tip of the love heart down the bottom closing up. Yes, well done. Let's hold the pike up here now and just breathe for two. So keep feeling how lifted and broad the waistband of the pants could be while the spine can curl forward. Really driving down through the two heels and then come out into the splits position and hold there for two breaths. Breathing and holding. Well done. So feeling like you open the springs, but equally pull closed into the hips. So it's very active, although we're in a paused position. 
bend your front knee, carefully bend the back knee as well to bring the carriage to rest and stepping yourself down. Sophie's going to grab her short box now and pop that on and I will stick all of her springs on while she's getting the box and just bring the foot bar down. So we've got a short box series now, genie flat, tilt, twist, climb a tree. Making sure the box is sitting equally in the centre of the carriage and finding the foot strap. So I'm just going to modify the foot strap up. So she puts her ankle under the strap. Good. Let's move that way a little bit more, so it's yeah, with the hips and the feet. Yeah, <laughs> feels funny, I know. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we're either side of that spring tension now. All right, arms start into her body and she uses the feeling of the arms pulling into her bottom ribs as really great feedback of where to grow up tall out of. And it also really facilitates getting the turnout through the arms and that feeling of closure in the upper back. Excellent. So breath in to prepare, breathe out, let's imprint from the pelvis without losing all that lovely height that you had and rolling back to challenge point and then exhale to come forward and sitting tall so the arms are really helping in this position to find even more depth into the center and you only want to curl back as far as you're getting your pelvis rotating around your thigh bones the whole time so if it feels like it starts to just be a falling back through your upper back and you have stopped the pivot at your hips, then maybe reduce the range and see if you can stay in that technique where it's just the hips moving around the legs. Good. So really lovely practice for the climber tree, which is coming up and how to find that C curve, but still having the support of the two legs down. So we can use the strap here to our advantage. We can feel a little bit of a push sideways so that the top part of the hips is really working. Nice, really good. Okay, let's take our two hands behind our head, ready for the flat back. So feeling again that you really just draw the two ASIS almost up into the back ribs and then grow tall out of the top of the head there. Let's inhale to pivot again from the hip joint to go straight back and exhale to come up. And again, inhale to go back and exhale to come up. So you wanna take your pelvis with the alignment of your trunk rather than leaving it behind. Feeling like you maintain that long line from the tailbone all the way up through to the crown of the head. And using that little bit of a push wide on the strap to help anchor you into your hips as well. Good, turning the armpits to face each other, reaching up through the elbows as if you're hanging from the ceiling from your elbows. Last one, straight into the tilt now. Inhale, go up and over to the right and exhale center. Up and over to the left. So if we were squeezed between two panes of glass, let's think of side to side action. And so if you can pitch forward just a touch more, just to emphasize the length at the sides of the back and feeling more almost like a mini, mini chest lift sensation right down in the lower back so that she stays long through the back ribs. That's beautiful, Suze. Last one to the left there, up and over. Excellent, hold there, let's twist. Inhale, twist and hinge. Exhale to come back up. Inhale, rotate and hinge. So it's a rotation coupled with that same flat back movement, really feeling as if you turn and look around towards your back elbow so that this lovely flexible part of the thoracic in rotation at the top is able to pivot and get its mobilization. Let's do last one to each side, last one to the left now. Good, now climb a tree. So we're gonna take our right leg out and as you can see, Susie's holding onto her wrist with her hand. If she was wanting a slightly stronger variation and she does have the flexibility, you could also hold onto the elbow. So either position is gonna be correct there. 
And what you want is for the leg to be really pulling into the body and also the body drawing and suctioning forward onto the leg so that you're not already hanging back. You exhale, straighten that leg once, bend it, and twice. Go a little slower, so we don't want it to be a kicking action. It's to start lengthening into the hamstrings. And if you can't fully straighten your leg without maintaining your upright, you don't. Walk up to the ankle, good. And then start to curl your pelvis under, rounding your head into your leg. And then stop with the leg at that vertical position. Walk down the tree that is your leg. We can either pause here, or we can do the full extension circle around. So if you don't want to go all the way into that full extension, just walk down to the bottom of your tree. Walk back up. Good. And then rounding forward into that lovely stretch. So there's a lot of different ways that you can execute climber tree. So he's just added that beautiful forward round stretch there, walking the leg back up to vertical. And think of the strap leg as the root of the tree. So can you really feel that anchorage down through that thigh, the heaviness through the pelvis? Excellent. And then taking a lovely forward hinge to stretch. That feels so delicious. Coming back up. Let's do last one on this side. Walking down nice and light with your hand. Lay the pelvis out in that neutral alignment and then extend back. Almost like you're going around the box and back around to your foot and then walking up your tree. Good, feeling the weight of the body tumbling forward into the leg and the hip. And then she's gonna put that foot back underneath the strap and change to the other side. Good. So, sitting tall on the sitting bones and feeling that suction forward of the body weight onto the leg and then feeling like it's an exhale to stretch bend good so oftentimes you'll see clients sort of kicking their way through this first little preparation section and usually it's three extensions of the leg but keep it fairly slow so you're really getting just a knee extension and then walking down the tree lay the pelvis out really find the anchorage of that thigh into the root leg that is the bottom leg with the strap and then walking back up super light so that it's the strength of your trunk flexors that takes you up. Feel like you also lengthen your chest up towards your knee and shin so that it's really lifted without any sense of compression. Good, really shine a torch beam out through the sternum, wide through the collarbones and walking up. Square the two hips as you go forward. Well done, here's our last set. So we've done three on each side, which is plenty. Standing into that strap, feeling like the extension comes right evenly through the thoracic there, so that you're not just puffing your ribs forward. And then we can carefully release. Staying with the short box now for the side overs. So turning to face the side, so you're sitting on your left hip, and your right foot is under the strap. Good, and just yet, yeah, find yourself into a nice alignment where you can hang really out of the strap there. I think my legs are falling on me. <laughs> <laughs> and you're trying to stack your greater trochanters or your hip joints one on top of the other, that feeling. Take your two hands behind your head and we're gonna inhale to side bend out and over and exhale to side bend out and up. So you feel as if you've got this anchorage and I'm giving a little bit of forward kind of feedback there to keep the stack of the hips. And then Susie wants to feel like she's waving her spine up and over the top of this lovely stable hip position. Keep reaching the sternum up towards the nostrils and suctioning the head back in space. Here's our last one. And then let's take a little stretch over. So reach down. You can even reach all the way to the ground there and just take a stretch, breathing deeply and trying to expand the ribs. Good, so feel as if this lung at the top is just falling down onto the lung underneath it. The bottom part of the waist is able to stay light and picked up so that you can side bend around yourself even more. And then just rotate slightly so that the two hands are rotating toward the frame. Have a lovely 
this stretch there. One more, really breathe expansively through the rib cage, front, back, sides, all the way up into the higher lobes of the lungs near the collarbones and down into the lower ones. Let's carefully bring yourself up and switch over to the other leg. So the side overs come from the lateral flexion category, which in this program, we have brought forward so that there's flow and all of the short box sequence is together. So hands behind the head, line up those hips and then away you go. You certainly don't want to be pausing in that start position for too long. It's very strong. So feeling as if the, the pelvis isn't tucked under at all. There's a sensation of the sacrum sort of nestled into the wings of the pelvis, sliding up the back and lengthening. Good. Yes, and lifting your eye gaze so that you're not looking down and causing your upper back to curl forward is a nice thing to remind your clients. Turning your armpits to face each other, last two. You can definitely go with a different arm variation if this is too strong, placing the hand on the headrest or taking the top arm up to vertical. And then take over into that beautiful stretch. Good, find your breath. You might notice one side quite a lot tighter than the other and just feel again the lung on the top side falling heavily down through the lung on the bottom side. Take yourself into your rotation. Good, last time. And let's carefully come up and let's put the box away for a moment there, ready for our kneeling arm series. So we're going to go with one blue spring today for the kneeling arms, which is half a spring tension. You could certainly go to a red if you like as well. Starting with the lat pullbacks. So we're facing towards the risers, knees against the shoulder rests and picking up the straps and just taking care not to overbalance or lose your balance here. Holding the straps a little like you're riding a horse and the arms definitely start in front of the line of the body. So feel as if you can bring your chest a little further forward so that it's definitely stacked on top of your pelvis and your sitting bones are going forward through the front of your thighs so that it feels like the top of your thighs are able to suction back. You're gonna inhale, prepare, and exhale, pull the straps back behind you. Inhale to come forward without changing your trunk and hip alignment. So although we're just getting that movement from the shoulder, it's actually mainly hard work to keep your body position the same throughout. So feel as if you're getting turnout through the top of the arm bones. That gives you a lovely crisscross sensation on the back slings of the body. The tips of the shoulder blades will come towards each other and down slightly as the arms go back. And then Suze, just bring your chest further forward for two more. <gasps> Woo! Sorry. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> that can happen quite easily. And in a way, it shows that you're in a good position because you're really forward on your knees and challenging your hips right in that position. Plenty. Okay, let's feel no time. <laughs> shoulder blades coming around the ribs and as the arms go higher and higher 
higher, you feel also the upward rotation, so the tip of the shoulder blades coming around the rib cage too. Let's do the last one there before we change direction. So circle around and up, back down through the center. Beautiful. Keeping that turn out through the arm bones and really feeling that lovely circumduction action in the shoulder joint. And so as the arms come overhead for this last one, making sure that the upswing of the shoulder blade stops the whole shoulders from lifting. Plenty. Let's do the diamond triceps now. So circling carefully up overhead in a diamond. Inhale, bend at the elbows. Exhale, press forward. Inhale, bend at the elbows. Exhale, press forward. So the elbow to armpit uh, alignment doesn't really change throughout. You're just sort of shaving the back of the head with the hands and concentrating on feeling narrow between your two armpits and narrow, like there's magnets at the top of your arm bones, almost pulling them towards the curves of your neck. Shoulder blades around the ribs again, tall through the sternum. Last one, doing beautifully. And circle the arms carefully around and down. Last one in the sequence is the reverse biceps. So arms are standing well and truly behind the body and you exhale and bend and pull the hands towards you. Good, so at this point, if you chose the blue spring, you might feel like you want to lift up to the red or you can stick with this same spring tension. So feel a little bit of a sensation of the collarbones rolling back. Yeah, lovely. And almost like there is clips on the back of the arms really sort of hooking up to the ceiling so that the whole of the back arm skin is puffing up to the sky. Good, two more. Still working the hips forward onto the front of the knees without breaking that line from knees up to the crown. Last one. Perfect, let's pop those springs down. Change to one red spring or just one spring. We've got our standing abduction now. So stepping the right foot onto the platform, left foot onto the carriage, definitely making sure you do it in that sequence. Let's take the hands either onto the hips or behind the head. Good. And you want to just find the parallel alignment of the feet, parallel alignment of the legs, and feeling a, a draw together and up of the legs, almost like you're wearing um, pants that start right at the base of your ribs. Yes, and then exhale, let's push that carriage away with two straight legs. Inhale to come home and exhale to press. So feel the closure at the top of the thigh bones and then imagine that there's a stretchy web on the outsides of your legs that you're just gently finding some pressure into to open the springs up and resist as it closes. Good. Last two, not too many repetitions here as we move towards the skating. One more. Excellent. Now we're going to now carefully step down and we'll do that exercise on the other side and then we will do the skating. So I could have challenged her and stayed up there and just moved into skating on that side and then done the two exercises on the other side. Either is fine. Okay. Just make sure the outer edges of the feet are parallel and there's some energy into the blade edges of those feet. Good. Stack the ribs on top of the pelvis. Exhale and let's press. Good. So keep going. What I could see Sue's just um, have difficulty with there, as she goes to push out, her pelvis tips forward anteriorly just a little bit. So keep the upward energy of the ASIS and she needs to feel more push then from the sides of the legs and the broadness at the hips, yes. And this is a, a harder side for Sue because the left leg as the standing leg is a little more challenging. Excellent. See if you can feel a heavier drop of the tail and the sit bones. Last one. Good, as the legs pull together, really feel the 
Excellent. Let's stay on that side and go into the skating now. So bending the two knees, good pitching the torso forward and really backing the pelvis up so that it feels like the shins can be as vertical as possible. Excellent. Exhale, press away and inhale to come in. So using the two legs to go out to straight and then returning back to bent legs. So you've got a good view down at your knees there. Check that they're not falling inward. You want to imagine still that stretchy web on the outside with the legs pushing open and in. Last one. And carefully stand yourself up, step down and turn around to the other side. Perfect, bring that left foot back in space just a bit there so it's, yeah. So we want to pivot that neutral trunk alignment forward and then back the pelvis weight back and drop it down behind the line of the shins. Good, exhale, press, inhale, close. Excellent. So keeping that sense of length through the sternum because if we start to forward curl through our neck and upper back, that will in turn make us curl and tuck under through the pelvis, which is going to change the pure hip abduction and adduction range of movement that we're hoping to strengthen into here. Last two, so feel closed at the top of the legs, but then feel pressing wide at the sides of the knees, sides of the thighs and pressure to the outer edges. Let's carefully step down that left foot, right foot. Beautiful. Now, I want us to just um, grab that box, long box work now. We're getting towards the end. This exercise now is the breaststroke. So we've got one red spring, which should be able to just stay on there. Pick up your small loops in your hands. And then we're going to just watch carefully how we get onto the box here. We take a lunge with our outside leg Hold the front corners of the box, lift the inside leg and hip and lay on your stomach on top of the box. So that's the safest way to hop on. And then the chest is slightly over the front edge of the box, legs together, and the hands are starting up near the armpits and shoulders. All right, so stretch the legs. First, imagine them going down the hill and then really find the sitting bones into the back of the thighs but the sacrum sliding up the back and then stretch the thighs even longer away out through the feet from there and feel a little bit of a sense of length and lift. Okay, feel a closure of the elbows. We're gonna start now. So we're gonna lift the back of the head, reach the sternum forward, reach the arms and then circle up and around and around to the hips, palms facing down and then pivoting at the elbows and coming back down into the hips start position. So feeling like you lift the back of the head, reach the sternum forward, push forward through the arms, lift or up and around and down with those arms and then semi-circle with the elbow joint to come back to the start. Good. So once you've got your choreography, keep going. Start finding that thoracic extension long and then power forward through those arms and circling around and down. So when you do the circle of the arms to return back to the start position from here, you don't want to drop your hands. You want to semicircle them around toward the shoulders. Last one. You certainly don't need many of these to really challenge. And lower. Beautiful. So carefully now, we're going to slide yourself off the box. So step one leg and then the other leg, or you can just reach back, let go of the straps. That's totally fine. We're going to stick with that same spring and we've got the jockey. Okay, so you want to sit one leg either side of the box, facing the other way. <laughs> and we want the straps as well, guys. So pick up the straps into your hands. So you'll notice here that the thighs are holding onto the box just near the inside, just above the knees. It's not too high up so that you can feel a really snug hold. And you're not feeling too tempted to push down into the top of your feet. 
So already, before you go anywhere, your hands are palms facing up, your elbows are pulled right back, and you're feeling a C curve of your spine, lifting your hip bones right up into the back of your ribs, and feeling like you're getting long curvature all the way from your tail through to your head. That's looking really good. And then the top of the legs, imagine rolling them inward slightly to, to hug onto that box as you push forward. Inhale, bend the elbows and lower yourself. And exhale, you firmly hug the box with your thighs, reach your arms forward. And if, I don't know if you can see, Susie gets a lift off with the pelvis, maintaining that lovely C-curve shape, which is very hard to do. You do not have to get the lift off. Even the effort of trying to hug the box firm with your legs right from the top of the thighs all the way down the inner borders of the legs rather than pushing down through the feet is going to help one day for you to have enough strength to lift your pelvis just off that box. So think of a forward and backward energy. Good last one. This looks great. Well done. And now we have the teaser. So the main event today, ladies and gentlemen. So shuffle yourself forward with your bottom on the box and lay down. This one's always a bit of a Russian roulette. What will we get today? Will we be able to come up smoothly or will it take a little bit more mental stamina? Legs together, roll the top of the thighs slightly in. And you do want to enjoy the start position, but at the same time, Let's make sure that the turnout of the arms and the wrap of the shoulder blades around your rib cage is what is helping you extend, not that your whole back just pushes up off the box. All right, I'm gonna get out of the way. So let's go. Inhale, circle the arms around, eyes and toe gaze, find each other, and then you come up in one glorious piece. Exhale and roll back down. And you'll notice that her eyes and toes stay on the same horizon the whole time. Air, inhale to circle around and come up. The timing of that is very important too because it means that by the time you start to roll your spine up off the box, your arms will stay in front of you. So if you leave them behind and you start curling up and your arms have not collected forward enough, it's going to make it very challenging. So let's do a couple more. It's as much about the timing as it is the alignment with this one we find. Really lovely. So keep punching forward through those arms and wrapping around the rib cage so it feels like you've got that strength going forward, dropping down into a heavy pelvis so that the legs and the body can come up as one. That's plenty, well done. You did beautifully there. Have a moment. <laughs> Let's drop the straps down, elegantly coming up to standing next to your box. Ready for a standing roll down to finish the class off. So let's use this final standing roll down just as a little bit of a, a barometer for how you feel differently now compared to the start of class. Let's inhale. Hopefully stacked alignment feels more natural. And exhale, start to cascade forward and down. Just starting to release focus, get the brain ready for what else lies ahead in your day and rolling back up. And that groundedness through your hips and legs should feel a lot more naturally occurring than it did at the start, which allows that freedom and that looseness through your spinal articulation as well in both directions. Less thought should have to go into finding that correct positioning. One more time. Good, and we feel tall and expanded. Last time to come up, feel the sitting bones drawing down the back of the legs, anchoring the legs down firm. We made it, well done. What a challenging class, we hope you enjoyed it and perhaps practice that one a few times through for yourself.